remember back when we told you guys shields were busted in Ultimate? Ha! Ah, what were we thinking? <laughs> now, we're here to tell you all about how shields in Ultimate are total trash. Okay, okay, let's let's turn Hype Beast YouTuber mode off for a second. This is the second part of our series on shields. Last time, we went over all the things that made shielding good in Ultimate. Now we're talking about what makes shields weak. Mainly, we're talking shield frame data, safe moves, shield poking, parrying, rolling, and shield grabs. We're gonna use the history, data, and terms we covered in the first video as a basis for this one, so go back and check it out if you missed it. And go check out ProGuides.com while you're at it. We've got courses from the pros and a live coaching platform there waiting for you. First, let's talk about the frame data. Bad frame data sends moves straight to the trash can, or the mix-up pile. Good frame data, well, good frame data lets you do this with a move. If you don't like that, then I'm sorry, but you don't like top-level Smash Brothers. But for real, DeBuzz does what every great fighting game player does. He abuses the hell out of good frame data. And Palu's back air is great for learning frame data because it has invincibility frames, fast startup, and low end lag. Startup is how quick it takes for a move to launch. If two opponents input two moves at the same time, the one with the quicker startup wins, so this is important. With 8 frames of startup, Palu's back air is pretty good. End lag is how long you're frozen in an animation and can't do anything after the move ends. Palu has 10 frames of landing lag on the move and can auto-cancel it to reduce that, so that's pretty good too. Then there's invincibility frames, what we want to look at when we analyze defense. Invincibility frames are frames where you can't get hit. Palu gets three invincibility frames on her arm when the move starts up. Doesn't seem like much, but those three frames mean that if Palu spaces and times her back air right, it's hard to interrupt. Like really, really annoying and frustratingly hard. It's a big part of why DeBuzz's strategy worked. Without those frames, Mario's up smash could hit at the same time as the back air and kill Palu. Now let's talk the frame data around shields, particularly their end lag. In Ultimate, shields have 11 frames of end lag. Normally, that end lag is called shield dropping, the time it takes for you to drop shield. 11 frames is just 11 60ths of a second, so it sounds fast, but in Smash, that's slow. When Smash 4 players call Ultimate clunky, these frames might be a part of why. Making a common input in a game slower makes the game feel less responsive. In reality, the game is as responsive as ever, shields just took a hit to the frame data. That hit to the frame data is a big deal too. Those 11 frames mean dropping shield is so slow that you're often better off jumping out of shield or spot dodging instead. Gone are the Smash 4 days where you could reliably drop shield and use a quick grounded option like jab. In general, gone are the days where you had a lot of flexibility out of shield. In Ultimate, your character likely has a few great options out of shield that you'll repeat a lot. Whether you like it or not, that cloud spamming up B out of shield is just being optimal. The theory of the hive mind of clouds on quick play sharing a single brain cell is still up for debate, but it is cloud's best way to get you off a shield. There's one more slightly hidden part of shield frame data. Shield stun. Whenever some moves hit somebody's shield, they stun the shielder for a few frames. The game shows that shield stun with a kind of gray static effect. Every move has different shield stun properties, and most moves have more shield stun in Ultimate than in Smash 4. Shield stun is vital because it determines how safe a move is. That's right, we're on to Ultimate's biggest bugbear, safe moves. If you're really plugged into competitive Smash, you've heard complaints about how many safe moves there are in Ultimate. We have a more in-depth video on the topic, but a safe move is basically one you can land on a shield without getting counter hit. In Ultimate, there are a lot more safe moves than there were before because there's more shield stun. For an example, let's take a look at, you guessed it, Palu's back air. Palutena's back air has 10 frames of landing lag and 5 frames of shield stun, making it minus 5 on shield. That means the opponent only has 5 frames to punish that back air. Some characters like Game & Watch and Lucina have super fast options that can punish Palutena, but lots of characters don't have busted up specials and can't respond. So Palu's back air is a pretty safe move. And that's another reason the Buzz could just spam it. If Dark Wizzy shields the move, he can only punish it with an up special. And he can only do that if he predicts the Buzz will hit a shield with a back air. Five frames is too fast for human reaction times. If Dark Wizzy uses up special when the Buzz doesn't hit a shield, there's a good chance he misses the Buzz and the Buzz gets a free hit. Palu's back air is one of many safe moves. So, it's common to see players spam lots of different but mostly safe moves in neutral and on an opponent's shield. And all those safe moves directly make shielding a less strong option. 
Sure, you won't get hit by the attack, but your shield will take damage and you won't get a counter hit. That damage on your shield then leads to shield poking. As safe moves whittle away the HP of a shield, it gets smaller, exposing parts of the character. If a hitbox hits the character without hitting their shield, they'll get hit even though they're shielding. Shield poked. That's a simple rundown. Shield poking is crazy temperamental and weird in Ultimate, and also Nintendo's way to punish Olimar for his many sins. But as a general rule, shield poking is a ton more important in Ultimate than it was in Smash 4. That's because Ultimate Shield shrinks faster than in Smash 4 and takes a lot more safe hits. In Ultimate, Shield is still good as a quick block, but it's not as strong of a go-to option. If you react to all offense by shielding, then you'll quickly run out of shield health and get poked. Especially since Ultimate has lots of multi-hits that chip away at a shield until they stab right through it. Another part of shield poking comes from perhaps the biggest change of all, power shield to parrying. In Ultimate, power shielding became parrying. To parry, you have to drop shield just as a move hits. You don't take shield damage, you and your opponent get suspended in lag, and you get to act 3 frames earlier than they do. If a move is multi-hit, parrying becomes a lot harder as you have to parry each hit all the way until the last one. And some multi-hits just can't be parried. But hey, the plus side is you get to feel like Daigo. Parrying and power shielding get a ton more complex than this. Just from this simple picture, we can see that parrying is higher risk and potentially higher reward than power shielding. To parry, you have to drop shield and risk getting hit. To power shield, you have to raise shield, not risking a hit. Parrying will create an opening, while power shielding won't. But parrying isn't as useful against projectiles, since the opponent doesn't get suspended in lag. Parrying is also harder against multi-hits, which, in Ultimate, are freaking everywhere. So, parrying isn't really an upgrade to shield. At best, it's a side grade. And not all characters benefit equally from it. Characters who can follow up with a quick, hard punish get the most out of it. See Lights Fox. Now we only have two things left to cover, roll and shield grab. Both got decisive nerfs from Smash 4 to Ultimate. Shield grabs are slower and shorter range for almost every character. Not to mention, lots of attacks in Ultimate will move a shielded target, pushing them out of shield grab range. Shield grab ain't what it used to be, so lots of players overuse it. If you're newer to the game or have played since Brawl but rarely played competitively, chances are you can improve your defensive game by just shield grabbing less. Seriously, don't shield grab unless you're sure it'll work. Shield grabs have a lot more end lag now too. You whiff a grab and you might just be dead. So what about rules? Rules vary character by character. Some rules travel farther, faster. Some rules have more frames of lag than others. That's information you can feel out for yourself or find on sites like SSB Wiki and Kuragane Hammer. Rolling gives you those sweet invincibility frames four frames after startup. That invincibility lasts until at least frame 12 and most frame 18, depending on the character. However, after that intangibility ends, you'll be vulnerable for at least 14 frames. And this is for forward rules. Backward rules have roughly 7 to 8 more frames of end lag. Rules are a lot laggier in Ultimate, and that's before staling. If you roll over and over again, the period of invulnerability decreases and the lag increases. So you can't roll across the stage like you could in Smash 4. That hurts shields too because you can't just roll away from shield pressure. It's a lot easier than it was for your opponent to punish the roll, especially repeat rolls. But how do we process this knowledge and turn it into power? It's pretty simple. First, understand that shielding is committal for most characters. Once you shield, you can't just roll or grab your way out. Second, don't always respond with shield because you'll get shield poked. Third, analyze moves for their safety. Find out what your safe moves are and what their safe moves are. And finally, remember Palutena's back air. Use it as a benchmark for a good defensive tool. Invincibility frames, check. Low startup, check. Low end lag, check. Usually safe, check. Great defensive option, check, check, check.